Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Fred Duran from Primo Line Kennels. I've been, uh, I've been dealing with the American Bully for about 10 years now. I was looking for a breed that was uh, suitable to my lifestyle. Um, I like to sit on the couch and watch movies and hang out, but at the same time, I like to be spontaneous and, uh, and jump up and hit the park and, and uh, be active at the same time. And, and these dogs, uh, I feel like they really do that for me. Um, I was looking for, uh, you know, at the time I was starting a family and, and raising kids, so I wanted something that was going to be uh, balanced in temperament, um, something that uh, could be uh, used as security at the same time as a companion too. You know, they're, they're great with people, um, but at the same time, my dogs are intelligent enough to, to know who should and shouldn't be around. You know, these dogs are really receptive to people's energies and their, and their body language. Um, and, and they do bark. You know, when they're insecure about somebody, they will bark. I'm not sure about not every dog will bite. But a bark is enough, and these dogs have a, a look that you know, I wouldn't want to call their bluff. I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody else that would. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, they're not so much of a, so much a security dog or like a man stopping dog, but more as a deterrent. For me, what makes the American Bully so great is um, I want to say the temperament, um, the look of these dogs, the uh, the also um, the character. Uh, the character of these dogs, they really have awesome personalities. Uh, very um, unique to any other dogs that I've, I've owned or, or been around or experienced. Um, these dogs are companion dogs. These American Bully is a companion dog. So what we do focus on is, uh, is, is keeping them connected and keeping them uh, as a part of the family, making them feel like part of the pack in a sense. We know that the genetic makeup comes from, from bulldogs and terrier type dogs that are active dogs and some working lines. Um, so to accommodate for that, you know, we, we try to keep our dogs as active as possible. I have three young sons uh, from eight to five years old, and we're always running, uh, playing ball, um, through the park, walks. My boys don't stop. So that side of the dog's temperament and, and that part of their, their makeup, it's utilized in our home. Like it keeps my boys busy, the boys keep the dogs busy, the dogs keep the boys busy, and it works for us. You know, I like to do the obedience training with our dogs because uh, we want to fight against the stereotype that these dogs have in the public's eye. Uh, our dogs, because of the way they look, I think that they have to behave themselves about 10 times better than, than your average Labrador or a Poodle or a Shih Tzu. Um, I do, and I think it's important um, to uh, advocate for the breed. Uh, it's, it's, it's very important. I think it's um, to have a well-behaved dog says something about their owner and the dedication that they have not only to their pet, but their breed. Um, the and it, and it also contributes to the safety of having an animal. These are big, strong animals. And when they don't listen, if they don't listen, they're not obedient, they're not trained to be around people and socialize in the house, they're liable to hurt somebody even if they don't intend to. Uh, you have a 100-pound dog jump on you and put his paws on your chest, uh, he, could, he could hurt somebody, you know? So I think it's very important um, to do that. And also with, with my children, like with my children too, my dog has to be obedient. If the kid's telling him to move, you know, my kid weighs 60 pounds, my dog weighs 85, you know, uh, the kid's telling him to move, he needs to listen, it's, it's, a, it's, a safety, it's a safety issue too. Some of the special activities that we do to uh, keep the dogs healthy and happy um, are, are uh, constant um, outings, constant outings into restaurants, populated places, um, you know, where, where they're going to be social and, and be able to come in contact with other dogs and, and other people too. Constant socialization, we love to, they, these dogs love people, my dogs love people. Um, the American Bully in, in general, they're a companion breed and they're, they're really affectionate dogs. Having them around people all the time, uh, it really brings the best out of them. These dogs give you facial expressions, they smile, they, they, they love on you, they wag their tails, they don't wag their tails but their whole bodies. Um, they're really excited about being around people and it really, really brings out the best of them. You know, I don't think there's really an age limit or age uh, requirement for these dogs. Um, they are a really great companion. Um, I think they would do great with, uh, with elderly all the way down to, you know, anybody who's strong enough to hold one, you know, or, or try to control the dog. Um, my, my eight-year-old son controls them uh, and, and can, can do well with the dog indoor, outdoor, on a leash, around people and other dogs. Um, and at the same time, my grandmother, who's in a walker, the dog's gentle enough to, to walk alongside of her and be okay. I want to say the American Bully, uh, as far as activity level, um, they don't require too much. Um, you know, daily, daily routine, um, simple exercises, just, just walking, maybe a little bit of fetch, uh, will suffice for these animals. And, and like I said, an old, like an elderly lady or a young boy can do that too. You know, because the American Bully is a companion breed, I think they would do well in an apartment. 
uh, I think they do do well indoors and they do do well outside as well. Uh, it just depends on your living situation and um, you know, as long as the dog has his, his, daily, his daily activity and he gets out on his walks and he gets his socialization, I think the dog can be healthy and happy in any home. Uh, benefits of keeping my American bullies indoor opposed to outdoor. Um, I love having them on the couch. I don't think there's anything like cuddling up next to one of these big muscled up monsters, you know. Um, uh, on top of that, you know, security, somebody knocks at my door, comes through my, you know, knocking at my door, they're going to think twice about trying to kick it in or, uh, you know, trying to come, come into my house unwelcome. Um, also, you know, they stay, they stay fairly clean, these dogs, because uh, they have short, stiff, stiff coats. Um, and it helps on like, it helps with like the calluses from, from the elbows and the, and the ankles or the hawks and things like that. When you want to get them into the show ring, you don't want to see such an eyesore. Um, it keeps them clean and it keeps them in good shape. Yeah, in addition to that, it keeps them close in, in a tight knit with the family. It makes them feel part of the pack, you know. Um, it, there's bonding time on the couch and I don't think there's anything like it. I, I guess the, the rules that we keep for the house, or for the house, the dogs in the house, um, Fairly typical. I, I like to leave my dogs on the couch, but only when they're invited. You know, um, I don't like them jumping on people and jumping on folks. It's just a bad habit to have. Um, they're big, they're heavy, and they can knock your plate down if you have a TV dinner. You know. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, as far as rules go, they pretty they pretty much have this guy. They, they're pets. They have pretty much free range of the home. Uh, they're just you know. They're not allowed in the kitchen. Mom don't want them in the kitchen while she's cooking, and we don't want them jumping on people and, and on the furniture when, uh, when they're not invited. When people come to visit, I just ask that they, um, I, I ask people to be calm and kind of ignore the dog and let the dog approach them. Because um, if they're insecure about the dog, and the dog's gonna feed off of that, and, and, and it makes the dog insecure. Um, so I just ask that they let, let the dog approach them and not be intimidated by the dog. And that's pretty much it. Uh, free playing in the backyard unattended. I mean, I leave my dogs out all the time. Um, I don't have a problem with it because my dogs are adults, you know. Um, like it, it just depends, you like on the pack, you know. Like it really depends on the pack. Um, in the backyard and like loose unattended, I don't like to leave them when they're younger, you know. Um, I don't like to leave my dogs unattended in the backyard when they're younger. Somebody can, you know, bait a dog to the fence and steal it. Somebody could, uh, uh, you know, potentially the dog could choke on something, get into something you don't want. You don't want them to around the yard. Um, Something that you wouldn't even think is a hazard becomes a hazard when you have puppies um, in the backyard. So I don't leave my dogs really unattended as pups in the backyard uh, at all. I like to kennel them down for their own safety. Um, but uh, but as adults, as adults, I don't I don't mind leaving them out. Uh, maybe one dog at a time, leaving them out uh, unattended. They hold it down. They hold the dog. They hold the yard down. They act as as a deterrent. You know, for somebody coming, maybe trying to steal one of my puppies or something that, that, of that nature. I don't really have a set schedule to feed them or to walk them because we're so active. We have so much stuff going on in our lives, and, and that's another great thing about these dogs is they're they're spontaneous. They they they'll, they'll do what you do, and they're they're they they've adapted to our crazy lifestyle. Um, you know, having three young boys and uh, having you know basketball games, football games, um, uh, school functions, and things like that. You know, it draws us. It, it messes with our schedule, and our schedule is always up and down. And I'm grateful for to have dogs that, that are easily adapting to that. Uh, my American bullies get along great with uh, the Chihuahuas that we have. Um, I, I don't, I don't see any dog aggression in in my dogs uh, as far as uh, uh, towards other animals, pets. I have two small Chihuahuas that are under six pounds, and um, and and they've been raised with them, and and they love them. They seem to love them, and it helps too because when we get out and you have little dogs barking at your big dogs, I don't. They've been desensitized to those to those things. My dogs don't really pay attention to it, and it's a big plus in the in the eyes of our community or in, in the general public because these dogs are, you know, they have that ugly stigma. So um, it, it definitely helps having small pets in, in the house. Uh, I would recommend the American Bully uh, to almost anybody. Uh, these dogs, these dogs are great companions uh, inside and out. Uh, I mean, as long as you're not out, I think, uh, you know, trying to climb Mount Everest every weekend, and um, you know, typically they're a low energy dog. Uh, they can they can do anything uh, from you know just being your your, your walking buddy on a daily, to uh, you know to to sitting on the couch and watching movies and hanging out. Um, I'd recommend this breed to just about anybody who's who's looking for a dog to that's adaptable, um, that's sociable, that doesn't need too much work to be sociable and and to uh, and, and to be obedient. Um, 
uh, I really love the breed, and, and I would uh, recommend them to anybody who's looking for something that way, something like that.